The equation x squared over 25 plus y squared over 4 equals 1 describes an ellipse. And we're going to find the vertices, determine the length of the major axis, determine the length of the minor axis, find the foci, find the eccentricity, and then we're going to sketch a graph of the ellipse. So first let's find the vertices. So I'm going to rewrite the equation down here and I'm going to note that a squared is equal to 25 and b squared is equal to 4. Now how do I know that? Well a is always larger than b. So the larger denominator is always going to be a squared and the smaller denominator is always going to be b squared. So in this case a squared is 25. That means that a is plus or minus 5. And we're going to take the positive value so a is going to be 5. And then similarly, b squared is 4. That means that b is either plus or minus 2. And we're going to take the positive value again, so that means b is 2. Now the vertices are going to be plus or minus a comma 0. That means that the x-coordinate is plus or minus a, and the y-coordinate is going to be 0. If for some reason the denominator of the y squared term had been larger, then our vertices would have been oriented the other way. We would have had 0, comma, plus or minus a. But in this case, we're going to have plus or minus 5, comma, 0 for our vertices. Next, let's determine the length of the major axis. So the length of the major axis is given by 2a, and in this case, that's 2 times 5, or 10. By the way, since we always take a to be larger than b, the length of the major axis will always be given by the formula 2a. Next, let's determine the length of the minor axis. Okay, so the length of the minor axis is 2b. In this case, that's 2 times 2, or 4. Now let's find the foci. In order to find the foci, we first have to calculate c, which is given by the square root of a squared minus b squared. And c is always going to be given by the square root of a squared minus b squared, again, as long as we take a to be the larger value. So in this case, that's the square root of 5 squared minus 2 squared, and that's the square root of 25 minus 4, which is the square root of 21, and that's about 4.58. The foci are then given by plus or minus c comma 0. And again, that means the x-coordinate is plus or minus c, and the y-coordinate is 0. And also, just as before, if the y-squared term had the larger denominator, then our foci would have been given by 0, comma, plus or minus c. But in this case, our foci are plus or minus square root of 21, comma, 0. Okay, now we're going to find the eccentricity. The eccentricity, which we're going to label E, is given by C divided by A. Okay, well that's easy. We know C, we know A. That's going to be the square root of 21 over 5. And that's about 0 0.917. Remember that the eccentricity of an ellipse should be a number between 0 and 1. Since 0 0.917 is between 0 and 1, we're okay. Finally, we're going to sketch a graph of the ellipse. Now if you're going to do this on a calculator, first you need to solve for y. And when you solve for y, you end up getting plus or minus 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 25. Now your calculator will not be able to handle graphing an ellipse all at once, so you have to graph two separate equations. You're going to graph y equals plus 2 square root of 1 minus x squared over 25, and then y equals minus 2 square root of 1 minus x squared over 25. And when you put it all together, you should get something that looks like this. Now notice that the major axis had a length of 10. Well, that's from minus 5 all the way up to 5 on the x-axis, that's a length of 10. And the minor axis had a length of 4, that's going from negative 2 all the way up to positive 2 on the y-axis. And yeah, that has a length of 4.